Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Jenny and I'm here today to review a book for you. I want to talk to you about Painting Time by Maylie de Carangao, which was translated from the French by Jessica Moore. So, um, I've had this book on my TBR for a while since it came out and I just happened to be looking for something to read while I was at the library, walked by it, saw it on the shelf, pulled it off. This is the one. So I did read this in August, uh, which is Women in Translation Month. And I am so, so, so glad that I picked this book up. This book is a little hard to explain plot wise, but I'm going to start off by saying that if you are a reader who is invested in plot, then you may not want to read this. This is a book about characters, about their interrelationships, and about their relationships with their work. So when I was reading a bit about Meili de Carangal, um, I learned that this is something that she writes about. She writes about humans' relationships with their work. And I found that to be super fascinating because I don't, I can't really uh, imagine or think of a lot of books that I've read that are like that, that focus on work and finding fulfillment in your work or the struggles you have with your work. So you definitely find this in here. This is a coming of age novel and we follow Paula. Paula is from Paris. She is an only child. She had parents who are quite devoted to her who um and, and overall uh, quite a lovely childhood it picks up right um it, it's kind of told in a in a jumping timeline but only a little bit so we start off in the first section with paula and her friends jonas and kate coming back together and meeting up in paris after they have been out in the world doing their work and they come back and they're having this kind of encounter where they meet up and catch up and then we go and find out their story. So their story is that they met while attending a painting school in Belgium. This painting school is a place where they teach you techniques for decorative painting and basically teach you how to replicate anything through paint. So it's not a place where you go to an art school where you're learning to become an artist based on your own desires, based on your own creative impulses. It's more about learning to paint all the different types of marble, learning to paint all the wood grains, learning to copy anything that you see. So you would be doing decorative murals, you would be doing, um, you know, lots of interesting projects such as painting the backdrops for film or um, plays, things like that. So this is the type of program that they're in and it is not a long program. I think it's about a year or a year and a half and then they're finished. So we follow Paula Jonas, uh, who is her roommate. They live together in Belgium while they're in school and Kate, who becomes one of their best friends. And the three of them are very different types of people, but they are learning together and it's a very intensive program. So they are painting like exclusively for hours and hours a day in order to produce enough of the work that they need. So you get this very intense, um, almost claustrophobic look at the intensity and the, the pressures under which their relationships developed as they were going through this program. So it's really about the three of them, mostly about Paula and how they adapt to this situation. Now, if you've been to college, if you've been to any sort of school where you're kind of pressed together with people, I thought that Meili de Carangal invoked that very well. She, she reminds you of those feelings of just like being completely absorbed by the people you're with and the work that you're doing. Um, everything else fades away. Your, you know, your parents don't understand. You, you're, you're a changed person. You're, you're, you're experiencing this kind of um, adult world, but you're not really in the adult world because you're still in school. So it's it's all those interesting feelings. And I thought that was evoked really, really well. The other thing that May Lady Karengal evoked in here, which I loved, were these tiny little moments of flashback into Paula's childhood, where she shared one in particular has stayed with me because it's something I remember very well from my own childhood. Um, she shared that that the character Paula is put to bed by her parents 
but she's fascinated by what her parents do when she's not there. And so she gets up and she goes and hides in a little corner and watches her parents as they're preparing their dinner and as they're being adults together. But of course, her parents know that she's there the whole time. And eventually, after she's watched them for a while, they are like, okay, Paula, go to bed. So I just loved that that memory because that is definitely something that I did. I was fascinated by adults as a child. I always wanted to know what they were doing. And so I never had someone write about that in a book before and it popped that memory out of me or like evoked the memory inside of me, which I found to be such a rewarding part of a book. I think that a writer that can do that is just really, really talented because maybe that's something that she did as a child, who knows, but I know I did it. And so to find that memory through a novel is so rewarding. It's just such a lovely thing to, to have happen when you're reading a book. Um, so we go through the whole year and then the three friends go off on their separate ways um, and try to live their lives. And so then we see this initial struggle of trying to find where they fit in the world after they're done school, because, of course, that's a whole other difficult transition from, you know, being in this school where you're you got to you, you know what you have to do. You just have to, you know, follow the teacher's directions to now being out in the world and figuring out how you're going to live your life. And so we follow them through that as well. Um, and I think we follow them through a good chunk of time. Um, Paula does lots of different jobs. She works in a paint in a cinema studio, very famous studio in Italy. Um, painting backdrops and of course at this time um, it's a transition because we're set here in kind of the mid 2000s this is a transitional time where this kind of older version of how people made films is no longer the most popular way to do this because of CGI so CGI is kind of taking over they don't really go into that in this but it's just kind of implied but again we're talking we're th learning about the people she's working with we're learning about the way she's working how she's living kind of couch surfing kind of um going from job to job kind of like being really impassioned by her work but it's a contract basis so she can only work on one mural till it's done and then she has to find something else and that kind of um paycheck to paycheck subsistence life uh, and then she, um, you know, you, you learn a bit about a relationship she has, and then she gets a job from recommended to her from Jonas, one of her, like her friend Jonas to go to do the reproduction of the caves at Lasso in France, um, Lasso 4. A life-sized a life-sized replica of the world's most famous Paleolithic cave art. So this is kind of the culmination of the novel, and it it has some beautiful reflections on um, life. It also tells that story of how those cave paintings were discovered, and uh, and and yeah, that's our story. So it's not some great big you know, novel of these big revelations or these huge plot twists. It's a look into the life of a woman as she's coming of age, as she's finding her place in the world, um, as she's going through her 20s. And um, I have to say that I'm not a huge fan of coming of age novels. They, I often find them um, rather repetitive and a bit... Um, maybe annoying is the word like it, I just find it hard sometimes to appreciate people at that stage of their life because it can be such a, a self-involved time that it's hard to convey it in a way that makes you makes me uh, want to engage with it again but this novel did that so so well and um, I just I thought it just had a beautiful reflection on creativity on um, learning, on relationships, on forming relationships, on letting relationships kind of be what they need to be without inserting a lot of drama. That's a really great part of this book. These relationships are not drama filled. They're not full of deception and withholding of information. They are more layered than that. They are given a lot of space to breathe and I really appreciated that. So 
If you like books about art, if you like books about creativity, if you like books about coming of age, you might like this book. Again, if you're super heavy on plot, I wouldn't recommend it because there's not a lot here. I am now a huge fan of Maylie de Carangal, and I am going to be reading all the books of hers in translation that I can find. So um, yeah, this book won a lot of prizes as well. It won the Prix DC, the Franz Hassel Prize, and the Welcome Book Prize. So it's, it's coming pretty highly recommended. So check it out if you are so inclined. And I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.